Good day, everybody. Wolf Driver coming at you again. This is our fourth episode of uh, Behind the Music, for lack of a better description. Basically, if you haven't seen this before, I'm explaining really all the lyrics in my songs and why I wrote them, what was going on at the time. There's a lot of interesting aspects, especially if you're a husky sled dog lover, even a dog lover, you can take a lot from this. A lot of learning going on, a lot of excitement, a lot of celebration of dogs. And all this stuff that I wrote, working with top high-end musicians, have such a good beat. A lot of them are parodies, which we're going to do today. And it really, I'm going to say if you're you're a little bumming, you know, maybe the weather like today is gloomy here in Maryland, it'll, it'll, it might change your perspective, put you in a good mood. I, I, get, I get pumped, I get excited. Especially, as I said, some of these are parodies, so uh, you'll recognize them. And this one today is from Flashdance, the movie, and it's an Irene Cara hit, the the title track called Flashdance. Now, you'll recognize the music, but you won't recognize the words because they're all (laughs) wolf-driverized. And uh, again, they're to celebrate huskies dogs in general and really sled dogs if you're if you're into that so uh but you're going to take a lot from this so i'm going to start it off the beginning has our opening logo and just get you pumped for it and the music's going to come in and the verses are going to appear on the screen so i'm going to come and explain them at different times in it so you can really digest it and understand what's going on so i'm going to put my headphones on so i can listen with you and push the play button here we go This is Addie. She's awesome. First in the morning is a loyal and thee. I'll explain that. So first in the morning, when and I relate this to my huskies, to my dogs, when the sun breaks, when they they feel the excitement when they when they know the day is going to start cuz every day I try to do something exciting with them they they're getting ready so first in the morning I might hear them before I actually make it to them because of that anticipation now if I've worn them out the day before really well sometimes they might be sleeping in but anybody who has a husky knows they're ready to roll almost at any time no matter what you did with them the day before usually so let's keep playing that's when their dreams start to see deep inside their mind. All in joy, they will sigh. Okay, so first in the morning, that's when that's when their dreams start to see deep inside. So that's again when they're rejuvenated, they recharge their batteries overnight, and they're 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 ready to go, so their dreams are all going to come true with me. I'm going to make them happen. And they, I say they start to sigh. So all in tone, they start to sigh. So usually people with multiple Huskies will recognize this. They'll, they'll come together and they'll probably start howling like a wolf pack or the dog pack that they are. And uh, they may howl. My Huskies do all kinds of different things. One of them sounds like a seal. <laughs> one of them sounds like he's whining. And uh, one of them, Zorro, who, who's not with us anymore, he was the deep howler. I mean, he, who really deep. I, I can't even imitate it. So uh, people who had never seen it before, who maybe are guests at our house, whatever, they're like, oh, my gosh, is that a wolf pack? What is that? I don't even know. It's my dogs. It's, it's amazing. So that's where... I get all in tone. So they're they they're not really in tone, but they're feeding off of each other as they start to express their emotions through their excitement, through their talking. Huskies are talkers. So let's turn back to Addie. With loud cheers full of want to just stop it there for a sec so they're the huskies are a very proud dog too they're like yeah man flexing their muscles showing you what they got so that's 
when they're howling, when they're talking, they're they're prideful. They're like, yeah, I'm 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 it. <laughs> Whether it's a girl, she's it. Whether it's a boy husky or a man husky, he's it. So um, that's how I get full of pride. And they're we're, the world made of wheels, made of snow. And what that phrase, that wording, that lyric came from that my huskies and almost all huskies, they want to run. They want to pull. They want to do their thing. That's what they were bred to do. So wheels in Maryland is how I mush these dogs or work the dogs a lot because we don't get as much snow as other places where huskies are typically from, you know, uh, northern areas, Alaska, et cetera. So they are a lot of huskies, Siberian, if they're purebred. That's where they where they get it from, that they love the cold. So their world with me is more based on wheels, just wheeling, rolling along. As um, But it's also built to snow because if they get any snow, if they get to play in snow, you can, of course, see the excitement and the love of it for the husky when they're when they're uh, able to do that in snow, able to do anything in snow. So the beat's going to pick up here, and we're going to let Addie take it away. Sorry, I got to stop it there again. So they they feel the passion, especially when they get hooked up or when they see a harness. They're like, whoa, and they get excited and they run around. If I if I haven't harnessed them up in their crates or where I can have my hands on them fully, a lot of times they're, they start doing circles. They start getting really uh, jovial, really excited because they know the harness is a sign that they're getting ready to get down as they do, do their thing, getting ready to mush in some capacity, whatever I'm doing with them, whether they're actually pulling me on a rigged vehicle or on a sled. I've done that before. Or if they're going to ride on the side or not ride, I I call it riding. I get to ride. They're going to run on the side. So that harness, and we use different harnesses, is indicative of them getting ready to rock and roll. And the excitement is overflowing. In fact, I have some videos out there where they're actually hooked up to the bike in most cases, but in this few of the videos I have, we're, we have to hold them back because we're doing something to the bike and we haven't been able to get any of their uh, excitement out of them yet. They, they haven't gotten to roar it down the trail, and they're just they're, they're bucking. I mean, they're, they're in the air almost trying to buck themselves or push themselves forward, and it's really hard to, to put a lid on that. And You don't want to put a lid on that. You want to keep that candle burning so i'm just saying easy guys easy guys and then when i let off the brake and it's time to go it's like a burst of momentum and it's if you've never felt it before it'll uh it'll it'll jerk you could be a tear jerk for me because i'm just so excited but it, it's it's pretty awesome so here we go again So this song I didn't mention is called Go For Wheeling. So it's called Flash Dance or What a Feeling, I'm sorry, the Flash Dance title track. So I call it Go For Wheeling. Again, I'm trying to match the words to the syllables to what was written in the original because I want to kind of keep it authentic and I want it to almost you think, wait a minute, what song am I listening to here? It's It sounds like Flash Dance. It sounds like What a Feeling, but it's actually Go For Wheeling. Um, So I say fur fur wheeling, I took that phrase from like four wheeling. So a lot of people will say, oh, you should see me. I'm I'm going four wheeling. I'm going back in the woods. I'm going back to a trail, whatever. And in any kind of vehicle, whether it's an ATV or a Jeep or uh, another four wheel vehicle, whether it's off road, a vehicle, or it's a real truck that can four wheel that most of the time um, for four wheeling is done off road unless it's in climate conditions. But if you think about it, the dogs are always for pawing or fur wheeling because they've got four paws and they can really do it in almost any conditions. And the more adverse, the more capable they're at. So we've gotten to situations where I can't even walk in a particular situation. It's just too 
icy, uh, too deep a snow, whatever, and the dogs can make it through, and I can't. And that's, again, usually because they they have four paws. We have two legs, so they've got four extremities in contact with the ground all the time. So I call them the original ATV, get you through any situation. So that's where that fur wheeling comes from. And, um, again, you can feel their excitement as they do it. So I'm going to let Addie take it away again. So tails are wagging, you know, um, depending, they use their tail a lot of times for balance, but when we stop, their tails are wagging They're It's hard for them to wag them unless they're going slow on the trail and they're excited. They're usually focused and really intense. The Huskies are just an intense breed, very focused, but their paws are banging at the same time. They're boom, 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 because they're rolling. And if you've ever seen them roll, once they get into a rhythm and a lot of times, a team will be get into the same rhythm. They synchronize themselves, essentially. So it's really cool to watch them run. It's just something that's breathtaking. It's awesome how they do it. So I, I've got two of my dogs are elderly now. They're, they're in their senior years, Chase and Jag, and they're uh, 12 and a half years old. So I get them by just taking them down the street by themselves, two at a time, because I'm going their pace when we're not all on the trail together and we're just doing local stuff. And it's amazing. I was doing it the other day, and I was watching them in sync. They feed off of each other, and their gait and their way they're running is identical. So it's incredible how they synchronize. Then I had my two younger dogs, Nikita and Lola, who are puppy adult stage, but they're very they're considered young, and they can run a lot faster and a lot more mobility than Jag and Chase. But they were in rhythm too, in sync for their for themselves. They were running again. They were together as a team, and then I had Chase and Jag on another run just in the same day in my neighborhood to get them some exercise, some mobility, and it's amazing. So those tails wagging, those paws banging, if, if, if it's happening, a lot of times it's happening in sync, in sync with each other, and that's what makes the sled dog team just so amazing to watch and how they're so efficient the way they move, and that's just natural instincts for them. It was, it was bred in them long ago, and it's really, truly incredible. So I know there's all different people out there. Dogs have different gates and everything, but once you start working them together, there's a good chance you can get that all to match up and uh, really re- really be a sight. So I say paws are banging, tails are wagging. Um, you can, they can fly it all. They can mush it through the night. So And a lot of times we do mush even through the whole night because I work I'm going to say I work the dogs all year long in the summer and warmer months they're they're getting exercise they're not so much working because as you know dogs are very inefficient at cooling themselves so any heat can be fatal to them but I'll take them out for what I still call mushing but it's more they're on the side of the bike they're going slowly they're getting a little bit of a just a walk or a little bit of a a trot in there so that usually occurs in the warmer months and at nighttime because that's when it's coolest usually the coolest part of the day is in the evening or when it's dark when the sun's not beating down but there are people that mush through the night when you when you get up really far north in Alaska you'll find of course that there's less daylight in the winter so they're out there mushing through the night and the dogs have a certain amount of infrared vision and they can see much better than a human at night. So we're using lights, and sometimes I use night vision goggles, so I I tease so I can see like the dogs. But I've watched the dogs. A hindrance comes along. I'm using infrared, whatever. They jump it. They they make themselves buy it. They know it's there even though there's no visible light for us humans to see. So it's really incredible. So it's a natural for them. They don't see as sharp as an owl maybe or a a nocturnal animal, but they do have the capability to see much better than humans at night. So um, we're going to let Addie take it away again.
So in those lyrics, I say they can so feel the trail and have the stride deep inside. So they're, they, they know the trail, the terrain. They have a sixth sense. Their, their smell, their senses are a lot keener than us humans. So they know the story of what's going on and where they're at. They know the animals that have been there. Um, they know male, female, what's crossed the trail recently and what they get wind of depending the way the wind's blowing so they feel the trail they know they know the situation and um they're again it's that excitement and um they want to they want to blow down the trail and that's their passion this whole mushing this whole ensemble everything we do is what what they feed on basically that's their feed and that's what i say in the song the the running is their feed the the mushing is their feed so I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about that fuels them, and that's their excitement, and that's their reward. So it's pretty, pretty interesting, and uh, we'll let Eddie take it away some more. So in those lyrics that close out the song, they go for wheeling. That's their feed, like I was talking about. But they're running now. They're sizzling. And I can't stress it enough. If you've never been on a real dog sled, sometimes people do um, when they go on vacation. They go on real dog sled tours at these different uh, vacation spots, which are really cool. I've done that before. And if you've never seen dogs do this they're just in their element and there's people out there that have even said to me that you know isn't that cruel you're making them pull you're making them this well if you know about dogs it's very hard to make them do anything they don't want to do so making them do something is is not right training them how to do it properly is what we want to do and also training them in the capacity that i do it to not be afraid of the wheels, not be afraid of the bike. That's a little more intimidating than them being out in front. Most of the times they're on the side. Of recent, lately, again, I started back with them being out in front because I've got the young dog, Nikita, who wants to pull so much. But it's one of the greatest gifts we can give to a working breed that likes to do what they do, and that's the husky that likes to do pulling and can handle the elements and has the endurance because of the way their bodies are built and the way they're designed. So it's really a cool thing to learn about and understand, and you can find that all throughout my Wolf Driver channels and throughout my music, what I'm always talking about, because it always refers back to how the Husky is just perfectly designed to do what we do for wheeling. So... Um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, Addie, I didn't mention, she's done a lot of songs for me. I write the songs. Her team does the music. They put that all together. I've worked with a couple different artists, teams, etc. cetera, um, more than a couple, actually, and they're all so professional, and they all have just so many different aspects to offer that really make this music come alive and make the lyrics really stand out and that's what i'm talking about because this is essentially a music journal of my life so look for more of these episodes look back at past ones and you'll see some of the different artists and everything that goes into this i'm wolf driver thanks for joining us signing off for today don't forget please check out our documentary 
coming out within the, uh, hopefully, depending on when you're see, seeing this, hopefully by uh, Christmas of 2022. It's going to be exciting. And if this is after that date, go back and look it up. It's out already because that's uh, probably one of the coolest projects I've ever done, and it just documents everything. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in again. Hi, my name is Bill Wolfdriver Hellman. I fell in love with the Siberian Husky. This is the roots on how I got started. Back when I was probably 11 or 12 years old, roughly 78, 79. I met Bill in 2017, and right away I said, you know, what this guy's doing is actually pretty incredible. I think it's something that the whole world needs to see. His love for his dogs is unquestionable. There is nobody on this earth who does what he does for his dogs. Everything he does is, he starts at the best and goes down from there if he has to. I hope people can take from that and learn about the love of dogs and animals, the beauty of nature, and how much a dog or an animal can be part of the family. The happiest days of mine are when I can make my dogs happy, and that's why I do what I do, because when I see, you can actually see dogs smiling, when I see my dogs happy, smiling, and enjoying themselves, that is, um, utopia for me. Dogs to me are um, God's greatest gift and I'm fortunate to be able to spend the time and do what I do with my dogs.